So the theories, okay, I'm summarizing, so please take it down as I write. So a thermal theory is what I had done. And I said, don't spend too much, too many words on this. Thermal theory, GS ke liye hai. Okay, and a very elementary study. So thermal theory, I said one is the Hadley's model that talks about uh, uh, land and sea breeze type of phenomena, monsoons. Uh, summer mein land is hot, so onshore winds. Winters mein land is cold, so offshore winds. And isi ka ek aur modification is the air mass theory given by Fawn. Why air mass? We're talking about the ITCZ moving like a front. And as the ITCZ moves, the trade winds, they cross the equator and they deflect. Okay, so India may the winds that bring rains are called as southwest monsoons. So about a question hai ki, sir, trade winds bolte ho, but all the trade winds are either northeast or southeast. India may monsoons come from southwest. So how are these trade winds? The southwest monsoons, jo hai, they are what? They're modified southeast trades. They cross equator and they deflect towards the right. And south may say they cross equator and deflect towards the left. Australia may the monsoon winds will enter as northwest monsoons. India may they'll enter as southwest monsoons. And remember one thing: the Hadley's model of land sea breeze type, and this ye galat nahi hai. Remember, it's not wrong. It's just that it is too simplistic and cannot explain the features of the monsoons, typically that of South Asia. When I'm looking for a theory, I want a theory must explain all aspects of that climate. The theory must explain all aspects of that type of climatic conditions. So important is why variability, important is why sudden burst, important is why advance is gradual, Okay, retreat is gradual. Why do we have tropical cyclones along with them? Why do we have Western disturbances? So, if we say theory is okay, not wrong, but not the adequate theory to explain why monsoons happen. Okay? So, don't call them as wrong theory. Just say they're inadequate. They're too simplistic. They're too naive to explain the unique phenomena called as monsoons. Okay, so this was thermal idea. The more important one is one is the Kutishwaran's theory. Its main okay, contribution is that Tibetan Highland, Tibetan Highland play a very, very important role. If Tibet is not then I would not have the type of monsoons we have. Achha. Tibet Highlands, they solve what aspect of Indian okay, monsoon? Now listen to this. The whole issue is, how do you explain the monsoons are on shore for almost three and a half, four months, starting from end May, okay, end May, say June, July, August, September, mid tak, the winds are on shore. Something must be feeding the winds to keep coming into the land. Agar this was land sea breeze, then there would have been fluctuations more faster. What is it that once the winds start coming towards India. They keep coming towards India for almost four months. And when okay, it changes, the winds keep coming out of India for another four months, four and, four and a half months. So Tibetan plateau ka role ye hai that they sustain the onshore winds. Something is pushing the winds towards India consistently. What is that? That we say is because of the Tibetan highlands. For the entire duration, starting from summers and for the time monsoon exists, the Tibetan plateau is hot. This is an area of low pressure. Okay, air is consistently rising. And this air rising pushes the winds towards India from the southern side. So Tibetan plateau ka in one sentence kya role hai? The role is it keeps the southwest monsoon consistently on shore for the monsoon rainy months. Chike? So a question is me banta tha. Is sir, plateau is here. Himalayas are here. Okay. Won't the Himalayas block it? Is it no. This is about the pressure gradient. Ye agar low pressure hai. Okay. This low pressure system. Or agar high pressure hai. 
the high pressure system. Now, this is not impacted by the Himalayas. Okay, until the time this exists, the winds okay, will keep on coming towards India. The Himalayas don't play a role in the pressure gradient from the Tibet towards the coastal India. It's something like Aapka agar slope hai, okay, and you make a wall here. If you have a ball rolling down, the ball rolling can stop, but the slope will not stop. No, okay, you can stop the ball rolling, but the gradient is still there, right? So, I say this wind can be blocked, hai, but the gradient is still there, means this areas continue to be okay, dragging the winds, this areas continue to be pulling the winds. Because this low pressure system is being fed by this area here. So, do line me liko up. Okay, as a summary or whatever you want. The significance of the Tibetan highlands is it sustains the onshore southwest monsoon winds consistently for the duration of the summer rainy months, summer rainy months from May to September. Is something like, you know, think of a car moving. To make the car move, you need four things happening at the same time. Car mein patrol bhi hona chahiye. Okay, car ka wheels free hona chahiye. Okay, I must have the ignition also working. And I must have the car in the gear also. Ye char cheez nahi hoga, the car will not move. Sa patrol to hai, but chakka phasa hua hai. Sa patrol to hai, chakka bhi phasa hua hai, but battery kaam nahi kar raha hai. Chakka bhi hai, patrol bhi hai. Okay, you, you have the ignition working, but car gear me need al reva. So think of monsoons like that. For monsoon to happen, what do I need? Okay, I need first the ITCZ to come northwards. I need the Tibetan plateau to be hot. I need the STWJ to have crossed the Himalayan latitudes. And all of this together give the type of phenomena that we have. So monsoon, that's why is not a one factor phenomena. It's a multi-factor phenomena. That's why it's complex. Or last time I told you that the monsoons are not shallow surface winds. Monsoons involve deep atmospheric okay, connections. Monsoon winds involve upper tropospheric systems. That's the example. So other areas, why they don't have Indian type of monsoons, Tibet plays a very, very important role. If Tibet is not hot, if Tibet does not develop a good low pressure, then this rising will not happen. The rising will not happen. The rising will not happen. Okay. The jet streams will not be weak. And the pushing of winds towards India will also not be good enough. So it's a complex system. So the role of the Tibetan plateau is to consistently maintain the low pressure that pulls the winds towards India for the summer rainy months. That's one okay, of the most important conclusion of the Kutishwaran's theory. Okay, and add a point here. In the years when the Tibetan low pressure is not well developed, well developed, monsoon rains will be weaker. As any monsoon band ho jayega, but the strength of the winds will become weaker. Okay, a small summary of Kutishwaran's theory. Second is the role of the jet stream or jet stream. Hum kiski baat kar rahe? STWJ. This is a very, very important component again. And this is what was given by Ian. Ian's STWJ ka theory. Okay. Now, this role ye hai that, uh, write down, until, until the jet stream does not move northwards, does not move northwards, the thermal conditions of Tibet and the ITCZs, and the ITCZ's role in attracting the winds is negated by is negated by the dynamic high pressure on the Tibetan plateau. It's something like there are two forces pulling the winds, and there is one strong force pushing the wind. What's pulling the winds? ITCZ pulls the winds. What can pull the winds is the Tibetan low pressure and the role of the TEJ. What is pushing the wind is the dynamic high pressure on Tibet. 
द आई टी सी जेड इज अ थर्मल कंडीशन ये लो प्रेशर है द टिबेटन लो प्रेशर ये वाला भी ओके थर्मल कंडीशन है बिकॉज ऑफ हीटिंग ओके सो इफ लुक एट द मैप ऑफ इंडिया ओके सो सो टिबेटन प्लेटो हिमालय ओके हियर टिबेटन प्लेटो में देर इज अ लो प्रेशर ओके देर इज एन आई टी सी जेड हियर दिस इज ऑल्सो अ लो प्रेशर these two low pressure are pulling the winds but isi time mein okay yahan par ek high pressure bhi hai yeah high pressure kyun hai because of the jet stream the jet stream is inducing a high pressure aur uska nature aisa hai that this is stronger than these to put together isme why nahi puchte isko accept karte hain that's how it is okay well, why does gravity pull down well, that's how it is just accept it the condition is such that the dynamic high pressure because of the stream is far more powerful than the tibetan thermal low pressure and also the itc is at a low pressure so jab tak ye rahega even if these are pulling the winds this high pressure will push the wind outside the winds yahan tak to pahunch jayenge andar nahi aa pa rahe i hope you got the point here is like you know behind the wall there's a huge uh, say sea waiting to crash on me but the wall is holding it back the sea is pushing the waves are pushing but the wall is holding it back the moment the wall falls okay the sea water will fill in the room instantly so this high pressure is like a wall yahan par ek wall bana ke rakha hua hai okay there's a wall here okay and this wall is not allowing for the winds to enter the moment this high pressure collapses the winds will suddenly enter into in, in india that is what is the burst okay so the role of this high pressure is the monsoon burst aur ek baar andar aa gaya then it will keeps on coming inside no problem there once the water has come inside uske baad water behta rahega that's why the onset is sudden But the advance is gradual. Advance will happen along with the ITC Z. I hope you got the point here, all of you. Okay. So, so dynamic high pressure का role क्या है? Okay. The role is that until the I the jet streams goes northward, this one will exist. And for any reasons, अगर ये वापस यहाँ पर आ गया, ये वापस बन जाता high pressure. So around this point here, the STWJ therefore is responsible for the sudden onset of monsoons along the malabar coast once the stwj withdraws northwards northwards put a star mark if for any reasons if for any reasons the stwj reestablishes itself south of himalayas it will again weaken the onshore southwest monsoon winds causing monsoon breaks yes i'm revising so most of you i expect ki aap thoda padh ke aaye ho causing monsoon breaks okay so this is the pamirs okay if for any reason if for any reason the jet stream ka southern branch again gets established here okay this is more powerful it will create a high pressure it creates high pressure on the tibetan plateau okay upar mein low pressure hoga surface pe high pressure hoga agar ye wapas ban gaya okay then this high pressure will again start a weakening the winds coming into india it will cause monsoon breaks and droughts in parts of northern plains ye hua hai last do teen saal mein this has been happening so the fluctuating position say down please the fluctuating positions of stwj is responsible for summer monsoon rains causing droughts in parts of northern plains yeah the reasons okay ye natural hai you know you know about the the jet streams can swing the streams can have meandering okay paths okay so exact reasons okay are the part of the part of phosphoric fluctuations the stream is never only one place yalka sa swing hota raha the swing hote hote agar zyada swing ho gaya 
it comes and becomes the southern arm of the stwj yes okay so it causes the fluctuations in the summer monsoon rainy okay conditions and droughts in parts of the northern plains stwj winters mein kyun rain karti hai teen reason hai the three reasons why the stwj causes rains in the winters one is it is in the latitude where it can pick up moisture okay ye mediterranean hai yahan par persian gulf hai yahan par black sea hai yahan par caspian sea hai ye jo stwj aise chal rahi hai yahan se uthata hai moisture yahan se utha raha hai moisture yahan se utha raha hai moisture ye ek reason hai second reason hai iske path mein yahan par himalayas hai okay and both the reason because this is in this latitude winters mein yahan hota hai summers mein ye aur north chala jayega na wahan se pani aayega aur na wahan himalayas hai theek hai